Hello again. Welcome to another Mark Harville Art Painting Tutorial. If you've not already done so, I ask you please subscribe to my channel. And that way you can catch uh, all of my tutorial videos and demos. So uh, we're kind of now on to part three of this painting. And it's been slowly progressing. Uh, the last couple episodes um, we went through putting the castle in. Um, and then we added the four round trees. Um, and even beyond the video, I continued to kind of add to the trees a little bit, opened up some pockets uh, of space in the trees so that the uh, sky can show through. Added a few more uh, limbs and branches, and I, and I may continue to play with that. I did come in and sort of add some of the foundational pieces here at the base of the tree. And uh, I'm going to probably come back and still work on that. But for right now, what I want to focus on in this video is now painting in our knight riding on his, his horse. And um, we're going to go ahead, of course it's already blocked in, so um, I blocked that in too, with acrylic early on as, as you recall. Um, and then I've sort of just been kind of painting around. I wanted to get the background in. And I was okay if we happen to bleed into the writer a little bit. Um, what will probably happen is I'll, as I work on the writer, um, the silhouette that I have here, it's probably just going to get a little bit larger because as I do work around the, the uh, areas here on the, on the uh, border of the horse, um, it's just naturally going to um, kind of get larger, expand just a little bit. And of course, that'll cover up any uh, paint marks uh, from the background that may have shown through. Um, so we're going to do all this in oil now. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So if, as I've mentioned, we are using our oil palette. I'm going to be using a couple brushes here to help me accomplish this. I like to paint with a filbert brush. I like these little filberts. They do just a fantastic job of blending. Um, this is a, a number one, a number four uh, filbert um, from Simply Simmons. It's a cheap little brush I bought from uh, Hobby Lobby. Um, then I've got a couple small round brushes here. Um, these are these are pretty tiny. Uh, you can see the head on them. Um, these are usually like 0 over 10 brushes. That's a 5 over 0. Um, that's a 10 over 0. Pretty tiny. And uh, this one doesn't tell me the size. So, But yeah, they're all tiny little brushes. And, and I like to use small brushes, uh, especially working with uh, human figures. And, you know, we'll be working the flesh tones on his face. Uh, that's really all. I mean, there's a little bit on his hands, um, which I'll end up outlining here. I'm going to take my charcoal pencil and let me grab that real quick. I'm going to take a charcoal pencil and I'm going to just kind of outline now that I've, you know, I've got my silhouette. But I want to really kind of outline the borders of the rider, his legs, um, his arm coming down, holding the reins, um, bring in details on the horse. Of course, the horse is going to be in battle armor as well. Um, and so we'll just we'll have all that kind of outlined here. So that'll be the first thing I'm going to do is I want to outline, uh, just like we did with the castle, um, everything to begin with, and then we're going to start with the face, and uh, we'll move into the knight's body, and, and then eventually I'll just start kind of moving downward into the into the horse. So that's what we'll get doing. So I took a moment and I sketched out our rider, our little knight here, um, just to give me a little bit of an idea about where some of the things are going to be happening here. Um, you know, he's going to have sort of the shoulder plate thing that uh, will sort of do this, kind of come down. 
Um, and then some of this is going to be implied. It's going to, a lot of them is going to be in shadow. Uh, we'll have definitely highlights here in the front, but it'll be a little bit more implied and some of it in shadow. Uh, the colors I am using, we're going to use titanium white, burnt umber, cad yellow, cad red, French ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and cerulean blue. That's going to be my palette. And uh, I'm going to start in the face and in the hair. Um, and with my flesh tones, I like to use my five flesh tone colors, which I can mix pretty easily. Uh, white, uh, ultramarine, umber, yellow, and red. And um, I can get a variation of flesh tones. So let's go ahead and get our small uh, paint brushes here and uh, we'll get going.
So I allowed the, um, the paint to dry last night. I'm using my Alkid oil paint. So they're, they're fairly fast drying. They get pretty tacky within five or 10 minutes of, of application. Um, however, uh, right now, now that it's kind of a new day, um, I wanna make sure that I kind of have all my all my uh, little chalk outlines kind of removed here. So I kind of get all that kind of removed, and um, I think I got most of everything. Maybe a little bit right here. So yeah, this is all dry now, and I'm going to go back through uh, to. It improves some of my highlights, but before I do that, I want to go and create a glaze. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use my my uh, liquid original, 
and I'm going to just put a little bit of this out to use. All right. And I'm just going to use a small Series 7 uh, number 8 flat bristle brush here. So it's nice and soft. And I'm going to go and use a little bit of liquid and I'm going to apply some ultramarine blue and just a little bit. I'm going to put in some ivory black. So ultramarine blue, ivory black. And I want to create a glaze. I want it to be transparent. But um, what I want to do probably have a little bit more blue than the black and enough liquid that it'll flow. I want to improve my shadows. So like right now, I think I'm going to have a little bit better shadowing kind of through here, you know, kind of on his back. And since this is all dry, it will not, you know, it won't disrupt the paint that's already on here. But because it's opaque, it will help to tint it, kind of get it a little bit darker in some of these areas. And that's all I want to do. I want to just come through and improve some of these shadows where I think it's just going to be a little bit darker all right then um, have a little bit of shadowing right here under his arm. And then maybe a little bit better on right here on his leg. So see just by barely adding, you can really improve some of those shadows. So if you don't get it quite right the first time, You can go back with these glazes and just improve. I think right here under his arm is going to be a little more shadow, a little darker. All right, and then running on the horses kind of right here on his armor. I want to bring in a little bit of shadowing kind of in the middle here. And then I'll kind of help to give it sort of a little bit more of a sheen. And I think right here we're going to have just a little bit That's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to come through here and kind of pick and choose where I think I'm going to have a little bit more shadowing.
this right here um, would be in shadow. You know, so I can come through here and just glaze on a little darkness. right here will be in shadow. Just a little darker. Okay. And I really think that's really all we kind of need there. Now, I'm going to come back now with my... I'm going to use this little round brush. Number... What is this? I don't even know what this is. Um, can't really read it, it's so small. But small little round brush. Um, I want to come in here and I want to improve my, my, my highlights. So this is a good time to do this now. Um, so right now, we're going to have a little bit better lighting. I add enough thinner, enough mineral spirits that this will collide. But the light is just catching here on the horse, on the horse's flank here. So. I want all this to be a lot lighter. So I'm just using my tonal best. My tonal best is I'm just using pure white, pure titanium white from the tube. And I'm gonna add these stripes right where the sun's hitting. So we got our knight painted into our scene here. And, uh, you know, it is a focal point to the painting. And so just slowing down and taking your time will really uh, pay off uh, in this particular type of painting. So um, I'm pretty pleased with that. What I'm going to do now, kind of the, what we have remaining on this painting is I've got to finish kind of all the shrubbery and bushes and things that are sort of lining um, this path. And then I'm gonna move into actually painting in the path. And that's what I, I wanna show you, me painting in the path and kind of merging it with this uh, grassy kind of uh, shrubbery thing going on here on the side of the road. 
Um, and then from that point on, we're going to be more or less done with this painting. Now, there are a couple of things I want to do into the water. I don't think it's anything I need to show, uh, but I do want to improve some of the, the sheen that's happening in the water, bring in a little bit more uh, stippling uh, just to kind of give it that sparkle. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's really kind of the last thing I really kind of want to touch up in this particular area. Nothing that's really necessary to show on video, but uh, before we meet again, I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to add our um, shrubs. When we meet next time, we'll be ready to, to move into working the path. And so I'll look forward to uh, sharing that with you here real soon. So once again, thanks for, for tuning in. I hope this video was, was helpful on how I would put together, you know, adding, um, adding a, an important feature to the painting. Um, and, uh, you know, please uh, continue to provide your comments and your feedback, and I appreciate all of those. So until we meet, thanks so much. Bye. Thank you.